Okay, thank you. All right, team. Check everything we've got in the right place. Am I in the right place? Can you see a lovely picture of Patrick? Yep. Yeah, even more lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone hear me okay then? Yeah. Rock and roll. Uh, so I'll do my usual. I'll speak for a bare minimum and I'll hand over to somebody else <laughs> and just chill in the background. Um, so welcome everybody. Another London XL meetup happening bi-weekly at the moment. Uh, for as much as we, there is interest and, and we can. Uh, yeah, Patrick here today. Uh, so we'll let him introduce himself and uh, take you through some, some wizardry. Uh, just usual chat from me that, you know, regulars have heard a million times, uh, but I've got to do my thing, especially for anybody who might be new on here. Uh, but Zoom, if you happen to be new to Zoom, uh, we have a chat window, which you can access at the bottom. Uh, there is a participants window. Uh, we can see others and what's going on. And this is just a, my standard slide with Clippy and stuff. Uh, just letting people know that in that chat box at the bottom, you can private message people. Uh, and just to, you know, just to double check, it's directing to the right person or set to everyone, if you're setting it to everyone, uh, before you send that message. And there'll be a lot of chat in there. Please use it to post your questions. Uh, we'll probably try and leave the questions to the end, uh, depending on how it goes. But, you know, feel free to pop them in there. And, you know, we'll leave them to Patrick or maybe somebody else. Uh, we'll put their two pennies worth in there. And the usual stuff, really. Nice and engaging, interactive group, as always. Uh, upcoming events. Hopefully you guys have seen the next two events, which have uh, gone public and you can like RSVP to uh, the second two events are not kind of public yet. I'm just trying to drip feed them out and not bombard you with a, a ton of emails in one go and, you know, upset you. So I'm sure you get enough. Um, but we do have the one in two weeks time on Wednesday the 30th with Abiola David. Uh, I think there's a lot of interest in that. You know, it's kind of something for everybody. One of modern features, uh, whether it be formulas, there's going to be some pivot table stuff. Uh, so it's not all modern features, but an emphasis on a, a kind of overview of them. Uh, we then got something a bit more technical with Brent, who I think is on the call. I think I saw him come in, um, which is something that's been in demand. I sent that survey out. Um, I think I've got 126 responses, I think. Uh, so thank you for that. And there was quite a lot of interest in at least an introduction to some power stuff. Um, so, yeah. You ask and you shall receive. Uh, Brent is going to show Office Scripts with uh, Power Apps and Automate. And then, yeah, it'll be public soon, but Roger Govier should be with us uh, to do some let function uh, stuff. Once again, something very new. So I'm sure a lot of you have not had much exposure to that. And then uh, still to be finalised, but Wynn should be joining us on uh, Tuesday the 10th. Uh, no time set yet, but that is probably going to be a lunchtime session. So it's not something we've done here before at the London meetup, something a bit different. Uh, they will be coming in from Perth, Australia. So, you know, I'm trying to be kind for once and uh, adjusting timings, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's the one day, never again. Um, so that is that really. That's, that's me, I've spoken far too much than I wanted to. Uh, are you ready, Patrick? As ready as I'll ever be. Go ahead. So, Tell me when you're ready for me to share the screen. Yeah, go for it, mate. Okay. Share, that should so throw me out. share the screen. Uh, do you want to continue? Yes, I do. And share a screen too. And click share. And you should now see the uh, the meetup web page. Certainly do. You do? Good stuff. Well, that, that bit is working. <laughs> so, hi all. Welcome. And... Uh, Glad to have a chance to talk about this here. I, I've uh, enjoyed uh, quite a few London Excel meetups by, the, by this date, so I thought it was time to give something back. Uh, for 
those of you who haven't met me before, my own background is as an Excel developer and uh, trainer and uh, general kind of business solution -y type person. And uh, my training then led me into seeing how people should be doing Excel better. So I got involved in USPRIG, the European Spreadsheet Risk Interest Group. So I'm still chair there. And I recognize a couple of people on the list who've been at our uh, meetings as well. We haven't had a one this year. We, we were live for the last 20 years, not this year because of obvious reasons. So let, let's hope things um, improve next year. But we do have a couple of virtual presentations and I also see Paula Gil Gilfoyle here uh, has also contributed one of those virtual presentations to our 2020 event. So this particular thing arises from a job I'm doing for a client Jay McGovern, who has this uh, top tasks methodology for analyzing websites. And years ago, whatever it was, 20 years ago, whatever it was, when, it, when, it, when all this started, uh, I used to just do the analysis in Excel and then automate it in VBA. And as time gone, things got more and more complex. So that this uh, life doesn't get easier, I have to say, in this world. So let me give you an example to give you the background to all this. The pattern of the presentation more or less is the first half I'll be giving you the concept. So for some of you, uh, you might want to fiddle with your phones while I tell people what collections and dictionaries are. Uh, and then I'll go into the actual stepping through the code. So let me give you the, uh, the background here. So here, uh, da, da, da. here we are. Uh, can I just move this? Can I? Can I uh, how, how do I close this uh, waiting room admit thing out of the way? Uh, Wait, can you can you see see my screen with admit on it, or is that just just on my? No, oh, that's, that's visible just to you, Patrick. Oh, I, oh. You should be able to. I, I, I've just seen how to move it. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes. So you should now see a typical survey page, yeah? I'm, okay, right. If you don't, uh, somebody will tell you. We'll no, we can see it fine, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll jump in and tell me, okay. You've all seen surveys before, but I want to give you a preview of what this particular survey looks like, so that you have the a picture of what the data is like before you see it in its JSON form. And uh, as I go through, I'll be able to explain how things evolved to the present state. So this is a fairly common survey, MontMonkey survey. There's an opening page, page one, with a qualifying question, do you live in Ireland, yes or no? And uh, if, if, if you click no, the second page says, uh, thank you and goodbye. Uh, if you click yes, which I'm going to do for, the, for this purpose here, we go to page three, which it's a, Third page of the survey, the question type here is pure presentation. It, you know, there's no interaction with it. The first one was simple, single choice, yes or no. My purpose in doing this is just to remind you what the different types of questions are in SurveyMonkey so that later when you see the data, you recognize uh, how this looks in uh, JSON form. By the way, I only pick Church Survey Monkey because I'm most familiar with it. The method I'm about to describe this evening uh, should apply to, keeping fingers crossed, uh, any JSON file, or at least any JSON file which has got records in it. There's quite a few other ones that uh, don't, so uh, I'm not concerned with, with those. So here we are on page four, uh, and this is the top tasks. Uh, Question, if you want to know more about the top task methodology, just Google for uh, Jerry McGovern and you can see one of his many web webinars on that. Or you can watch his webinar, for example, on the COVID surveys that were done for various health authorities in uh, Ireland, UK, New Zealand, Canada, and so on. This particular one is for the um, Irish uh, Health Service, HSE. So this particular question type is a multiple selection. You can pick any number of uh, boxes here. Uh, they, do, they do say, 
select up to five. If I decide to pick six, I'll go down to the end and I say next, it'll bring me back up the top and say, uh oh, yeah, only select up to five. So again, in the survey data, you'll see later, you'll see where that text message comes from. Or better explain, what I'm showing you is the structure of the survey. Basically, these questions and the responses that apply to them. You're not going to see the results, uh, mainly because they've all been de deleted. This is a, a, an old survey. And also because, in, as you will see, they may contain personally re revealing information. So all you're going to see is this public domain stuff, which is what, is, what the survey looks like. So uh, we could pick five and it's happy. I'll just pick four just for interest sake and go on to the next page, page five, I think, if I'm counting right. Uh, and here we have, oh, I've answered this earlier, as you can see, my, my, pre, my, my previous answers are, are still there. So that's, that's fine. Again, single response type question, you can only pick one. And in, for most of these, you must pick one. Some questions are required, some not. I'll go on to the next page. And this one has two questions on the page. So far, you've seen one question per page. This one has two, a single response question and a multiple response with, again, up to three. So I've picked three. Here we are. Uh, again, six single response. Graham, must be up to page six now. Doesn't matter. Uh, and we now have the, a lot of these about you type questions with a mixture of single response and multiple response. And some of them have this other, please specify option, where you can pay a press and come in a text input. This is where some of the more um, revealing and perhaps uh, entertaining responses go in, but so you, you're not going to see them. Uh, okay. There's one peculiarity about this um, survey, which I'm going to show you now. Um, and this illustrates that life is not that easy for um, survey analysis people. People don't always set things up the way you might expect. So here, for example, the person designing this website decided to make the age question multiple choice, multiple selection. So you can pick all of them if you want to. Yeah rather than single selection, which is what you would normally expect for, for uh, an age question. So that gave rise to some interesting uh, redundant responses in, in, in the survey. So down the bottom, next page, again, more single response questions. And at the bottom, a uh, free text, where you can have uh, multiple lines of text, any kind of comment you want uh, after that. So with this stage, I think we've seen the main question types in a survey. And when I go on to the end, this is where you're asked to put in your, your, your email address. So again, that's another reason why we can't show you the responses. Well, I could if I anonymized it, but I, I, just, I, I didn't bother. So that now is, um, that's what a survey looks like. Now, uh, let's see how, you, how I analyze this in Excel. Back in the days when all this started, uh, SurveyMonkey used to provide what I call a database format. Uh, and here we are. Uh, that, that. Uh, agenda, agenda, agenda. It's going down, down at the end. Here we are. Yeah, this is my checklist of what, what I have to talk about. So I've done the background, I've done the uh, preview. So they used to supply XLS files. And this one, for example, is a one record file which tells you there's the survey ID, its title, its date, that kind of stuff. Then you get a questions file, which is a list of all the questions asked in the survey. And here you have the question type. 10 is a code for single response, 20 is a code for multiple uh, response, uh, 110 is free text, multiple lines, 90 is text with one line. You know, you don't have to remember that. I'm just illustrating how those structural things you saw in the survey are coded when it comes in, into a, a, a file. Finally, for each question, there's a, an options file which lists all the options for all the questions. 
So for, for question ID, whatever it was, there are, uh, there are two options for this. They each have their own ID and the option text is just yes or, or no. And down at the end, somewhere you can see the other please specify questions. So you have 162 options or choices, if you like, in this survey. So that's the way I used to get the data. So that was nice and simple. That that, they were Excel tables. I could uh, relate them. I could uh, re relate this structural stuff to the uh, responses and produce nice reports. Then they changed to uh, a REST API, which returns JSON text back in 2014. And uh, I don't think I had Power Query back, back then, Excel 2010, or certainly the client didn't anyway. So, um, I did this using the good old familiar uh, VBA. And I wrote specific code just to download the JSON text and produce the reports the way we always did. And then when looking at other people talking about things in the Excel meetup, I thought this could be an interesting thing to generalize, where although I'm going to use Survey Monkey because I, I always did, uh, I'd like to be able to do it for any JSON file, or at least any JSON file containing records to take the records out of that and put them into database tables. So to explain what a, a REST API looks like, we can look at the documentation on the SurveyMonkey website. And here we are. Let's give that a chance to um, render for a moment. And so this is the, uh, I hope you could, if I zoom up a little bit, I'll make the font a bit bigger. That's what it looks like. And you could pass it in through, through uh, curl on a command line. In, in my case, I use the XML HTTP object to, to get that data. And uh, you get back a sample response, which is like this. I'll be explaining in a moment oh, what all these curly things mean. But essentially, what you really need to pay attention to here is these pairs, there's a field name, there's its data, field name, data, field name, data, all the way down. And that is the structure we're going to get out into tables at the end. Some of these fields are not simple data. They in turn point to other objects. So custom variables is in fact an object, which itself contains a key and a value. And you see, so that will be broken out into a separate table, if like a child's table of this survey table. And the same will apply down below to the pages. The pages is, are, are going, to be, going to appear as subtables. Well, then they made up subtables of questions and so on and so forth. And they, they just say page object here and you'll see in a moment what a page object looks like. So that's, the, that's what an API response looks like. So you grab this as a chunk of text and you want to do something with it. So I go back to my agenda. Uh, let's look what a JSON file lo looks like when you get it in the raw form. And I'm gonna get uh, survey uh, details.json. Here we are, here it is in Notepad. And looks like all the typical messy stuff you get. Fortunately, Notepad has a nice little um, JSON viewer where you can format it look, looking a bit, bit better. So that's in a more structured form. This now looks more like what the documentation of SurveyMonkey is, has explained to you. And you can see that we have this title. Uh, we have this buttons text where at the bottom of, of the survey, there's these text you go next and previous. And somewhere down the bottom, we have, yeah, we have the pages. And this is a collection of pages. And within the pages, there are questions. And if you look down the, the, the questions, within the questions, there are, the question has a heading, I like this question. Then you have the choices for this particular question, which are yes or no. And each one of them is decorated with a lot of other information, like where, where it is in the page, whether it's visible, whether it has any quiz options, all this kind of stuff. 
So this is a pretty deeply nested structure. It's about nine levels deep. In fact, when you count them all, it's something like 13 or 14 tables in all this. So obviously it'd be nice to uh, reduce them to something that we can, or we're familiar with in Excel. If you want to know more about this, you can look at the JSON specification. It'll tell you the two essential concepts, record and list. I'm going to explain this because we're going to be seeing a lot more of these shortly. The record begins with a curly bracket and has pairs of field and value, field and value. And these values can be simple data or they can be other records or other arrays or other objects. A value can be literals like false or true, or it can be an object like a, a record or an array. An array is the other type we're concerned with. It's introduced by a left square bracket. Now you have a, a list of elements and a, a right square bracket at the end. Uh, these elements can be anything. They can be values, more records, more arrays. But the essential thing is there's those two basic objects, the record or the array. Anything else is just values. Um, there are escape characters, by the way, to rep rep represent uh, character turn, line feed, and so on, but um, I, I won't worry about that here. So that's what the JSON specification lo looks like. Uh, I'm going to those, those pretty fast. You, you can read up on those later. So what you do when you, when you download the file is you get this structure. And our my task, uh, as I have accepted it, is to flatten all this into normalized tables. At the base, you have a survey record, and it's a dictionary. All base records in JSON are dictionaries. It has fields, title, language, and so on. And one of the fields is pages. And the pages is a list of page records. And the page record is also a dictionary with title, description, position, and so on. So it's just to say something I might have skipped over, a record in JSON becomes a dictionary in, in uh, VBA. A list in JSON becomes a collection in VBA. That's how that's done. Within the pages, you have questions. Some pages have one question, some have seven. Within the list of questions, you have the question records. Each question record has the answers. And there's basically only two kinds of answers, a fixed choice, like is it this or this or this, or the other where they type in something, the free text one. Within the choices, you've got where, how many it is, whether it's visible, the text of the choice, like yes or no, and there's, there's quiz options which don't apply here. I'll be giving you this workbook afterwards for you to read and embedded in the worksheet is a survey details JSON file itself, so you can uh, open up that and read it, if, if you care to uh, follow this through. You might more be more likely to use your own JSON file, which is of interest to, to you from your favorite data source. Uh, Alan, I'll probably have this um, workbook uh, in a day or so. The one I'm working on has all kinds of demo junk in it, which I want to take out before giving people a relatively clean version. And yeah. if it isn't clean, people will, will tell me. So there is the, that's what we get. This is what we want. It's a set of where all those records you saw in the JSON have been extracted and splattered across there into separate tables. A surveys table, with once again, title, language, blah, blah, all the stuff, date creation and so on. So that's the surveys table. It has, has only one record, but it, it, it's a table. It has a, a, there's a pages table, which has 11 uh, records in it for the 11 pages in this survey. And the, the individual pages relate back to a question table where you have all the possible questions, which were, I think, was it 20 or? or so questions in the survey, and then they in turn are related to the answers and their choices. It's quite an atomic uh, breakdown. They've put things into sub tables, which uh, you might prefer to be in a, in a main table. So for example, the question, 
when you ask a question, the text of the question is called a heading, but you don't have one, one heading. You've got have multiple he headings, which is oh, it's over here. Headings, and, and that, that, that is, uh, so you can have several lines of, of heading. For my useful purpose later, I would probably rejoin those back into one single heading text field, but this is the way it, it's uh, split up. So that's what we get, and that this, this sheet here is what we want. Okay. Uh, so I've done that. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna have a quick look at the data in Power Query uh, at a very simple level. I know there are more uh, complex things that can be done, but, just, but it's simply a useful way of giving you a picture of the data again. So let me start a new file a new work workbook, okay? So I don't mess with anything here. Data, get data from file, from a JSON file, and it's going to be the survey details um, file again. I'm getting a bit too many files here, but anyway, that's the one, the one I want. Open it, and here we are, it connects to it. It's your Power Query Editor. And voila, there's your source. Uh, it's a record. There's all your title, category, question count. This should be becoming familiar by this stage. And at the bottom of, of this record, you have the pages object, which is a list. You click on the pages object and you get list of the records in this. You click on the eighth one, say, and you get, okay, it's about you. There is a question, seven questions on the page. The questions are a list and so on. We can go to any particular question and look at it, its structure. So that gives you the, you know, the power query drill down into it. And I might decide at some point I want to convert this into a table and close and load it. And back in Excel, I get that one question. All I get for headings are list, all I get for answers are the word record. So, okay, it's there, but we're not getting a lot at, at the time. So that's as much as I wanna show at this stage. As I say, I, I did this in familiar old VBA, so this is, is the one that I, I'm going to use now for, now this is getting, uh, the screen sharing is getting in the way there. There, don't save. Here we are. So I'm going, going to use this. The way, the route I, we, we use is, um, I'm going to first of all convert the JSON text to uh, a dictionary, which has a collection of dictionary and collection objects in it. And then from the, the dictionaries, I move them into ADO record sets. And then we do, all we have to do is splat the record set to a sheet and the job is done. I'm gonna give you an overview of the concepts. How are we doing for time? Half an hour, okay. Getting close to it. Uh, I, I shall have the concepts done soon and we get, get into the actual code. A collection object, it's native to VBA. You add, you, you add items to the collection. It's like an extensible array where it has a key, which is a string, an item, which is a variant. Uh, it doesn't have any method to tell you whether, whether a given key exists uh, or not. So one of the first things most people do is write a collection key exists function, which uh, sets up an error trap, tries to access the item with that key name. And if there's if it's no, no error, then it, it exists. And the typical way of looping a collection is to say, for each item in the collection, do something with it. That's all I'm going to say. If you want to know more, Paul, Paul Kelly has an excellent web page on his Excel Macro Mastery website explaining it. It's, it's in the free section, so it, it, it's open access to all. That's the collection object. The dictionary, which is how we represent records in, in JSON, uh, you get by using Microsoft scripting runtime. You add this reference here. Or you could, if you wish, just use 
later binding and use the scripting dictionary, uh, create object call. Create object is, pre uh, scripting dictionary is present in all versions of Windows, so it, it's a pretty safe one to use early binding for. Recommendations are usually that you use early binding for uh, development. So you get all the IntelliSense and you get, it tells you if you've, any, if you've mistyped any method names and that kind of thing. But you might use late binding if you weren't quite sure which version of the library your client had. This one is where we're fairly safe to use uh, early binding. The dictionary is structured as keys and values. So in dictionary, similar to collection, you add a key and a value. Difference with the collection is that it has a, an exists function built in to tell you whether the key exists. And you can update uh, an entry by saying di di dictionary subscript key equals value. You, you can't update values in a collection. You have to delete and uh, re-add uh, it again. And you retrieve a value by saying the value is equal to dictionary indexed by the key name. Trap here, you need to be, if you haven't done much work in dictionaries before, it has this lovely auto add feature. If you misspell or in any way put in the wrong key, it doesn't complain. It just automatically adds it anyway. And uh, you know, find yourself with, with a, a blank uh, value added to your dictionary that you hadn't uh, expected. What's even more nasty is if you're in the habit of using the uh, VBE debug watch window, you happen to put in dict bracket one, let's say, to, to look at what you think is the first dictionary item. Uh, if the key quote one quote doesn't exist, it'll quietly add it. It'll add it every time you run the code because uh, it's in the watch window and, and that can cause you all kinds of surprises. So just, just be aware of this auto add thing. The way you loop a dictionary, there it is. It has a, a, a two properties, dict keys, which is an array of all the keys, dict values, which is an array of all the values. And typically for each key in dict keys, we can print the key and its value. And that's it. Again, Paul Kelly has more information on this if you want to read up more about that. So that's the dictionary. And the third concept you need is the record set. It's an ADODB record set, which you get by this one here, ActiveX Data Objects 2.8. Um, you could use early binding if you're sure that your client has 2.8. If, if they have older versions, you could use late binding, whichever you wish. So there's your, with your reference, you get your, your new record set. And a record set is like the structure of a database table. It has fields. When you, ha when you have a blank record set, you add the fields to it, giving it the field name, the field type. The field type is a numeric code. Look up the Microsoft ADO documentation to know what the code for uh, double float uh, string uh, character and, uh, and so on is. Uh, I don't know any of them off by heart. I don't, don't have to uh, I ha use it, the, the functions to, to tell me that. Uh, so to create a, a record set, you loop through all the field names you have and you add it to the record set. When you're ready to actually operate upon it, oh, there's one I, I forgot. You, you have a record set open, huh, statement first. So you now have an open record set. You add a new blank record to the record set, adding a record to, to the table. And for any given field name, you set the field value equal to whatever the appropriate type is you want. You could just assign it directly and let VBA do the type conversion for you. Uh, or you could use C double or C string and so on if you want to be absolutely sure. When you've looped that for all the fields, stuffing the data into the fields, you finally do ORS update. And that's the record saved to the um, database. Now, in my case, I'm not using a database. I'm going to use what I call disconnected record sets, which only exist in memory. Uh, but they're still there. They're just as much a, a record set as anything else. And when, the record, when we've completed adding all the records you want, you do a range copy from record set. You pick some range and some sheet, give it that line. And in one, in one line statement, the whole record set appears on the sheet. Bob Phillips has a nice page on this. 
if you want to read up on uh, on these record sets. So that's the concepts. Uh, I think I'm ready to actually show the code at this stage. Uh, yeah, that's the, the, ha the half hour I spent. Good. How do you get from your text to uh, to this JSON object? Well, we use a, a free public domain library called uh, JSONlib. Uh, it, it was available on Google sites. I um, found a few bugs in it, so I'm going to give you a, an updated version of it, which is a few things that are fixed. And all you have to do is you set a, an object equal to a new class JSON library, and you call, call the pars function to convert this text into, uh, an, into a JSON object. And that's it. And then we work our way through the JSON object to convert its records into record sets. How do we do that? Well, it's time to, to explain to you the uh, recursion method here. This is 12 point uh, font. I hope it's uh, fairly visible to, to, to everybody. I have the immediate window on that side. That side I, have, I have the code over here. And this doesn't do anything. Uh, but it simply illustrates the structure of, of recursion. It's a nested structure, so recursion is a pretty obvious way of drilling down into it. So uh, if we take this example here, oh, this is a bit boring uh, name, oh, this will do perfectly well. Uh, I've written a, a test sub underneath. There is a piece of um, JSON, it has a curly bracket, one field called name and a numeric value one, two, three. And that's all it has. It's a, it's a one field, one record piece of JSON. So that's nice and simple. Uh, what the recursion method does is you pass the JSON to the recurse JSON function. And now we look at the type of the data that's passed into it. You have only three kinds. It's either a dictionary or it's a collection or it's a scalar value of some kind. And you want to decide what to do about that. If it's a dictionary, we call the same function again, this time passing in each item in the dictionary. The item is a key. So in this case, it'll pick up the value of the, of, of, of the first key, call the function again, and you go into the function and it says, okay, is this thing a, a dictionary or is it a collection or is it a simple type? And you handle that as appropriately. If it's a collection, and this is how what collection, oh, sorry, I didn't explain. There, that's what a, uh, a record looks like, a dictionary. Key, value, key, value, key, value, and so on. A, a, a collection is a, doesn't have any, it has a, a collection item, has a name, which, which is the, is the key in, in the dictionary. But a collection has a list of items. There's no key names in there. It's just a, one dictionary after another. Or, you could have collections which are not dictionaries. We don't have them in this JSON file, so I'm not, 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 not going to be talking about them. But the code I have here does handle them. It is simply converts them to a, a simple string. because if, if they aren't in records, you can't put them into, into tables, so we don't care. But you get a, a string. So that's the essential recursion method of running down all the rabbit holes of JSON until you finally come out at, at the end. And to see how it works, let's do this very simple test here. We, uh, at this stage, to see the keyboard, I'm going to look for a bit more help. Right. Uh, we work our way through all this. We, um, we have a new class JSON library. Oh, I better, I better explain. Huh. I didn't say where that one came from, did I? In this here, there's my class modules, class JSON lib, and there's it, its code, and there's the original, and there's all the all the code, and you might see a few you know, POB comments there, which are my own fixes to that to that code. But that's just use it as given. You don't have to work our way through all that. Now move this back again so I can uh, so I can uh, have a bit more screen to work with. Thank you. Now, that's fine. 
we, we have this new library, we're going to tell it to parse this simple str string here. Because of the way you get double quotes in VBA, it looks a little bit awkward. So let me just show you what, what, what this is like. Uh, Oh, uh, now the the the, uh, the the menu here is getting away. Yeah, if I print this there, so this is is what the sub will see. There's your simplest possible record structure in JSON. So we ask it to, to parse it. It does that and gives us back an object. And we're now ready to go and have a look at this object. Uh, I'm going to call a function debug uh, JSON indent, which will pretty print the components of this JSON object in the indented fashion. So I'm hoping it'll make it uh, reasonably easy to read. You can, of course, also use the watch window. Add a quick watch. Uh, there's the object. It has a, it's a dictionary. All JSON root objects are, are dictionaries. It has one item in it. Its name is name, and that's it. To get its value, you have to say object quote name. That's all I'll do now. But here we'll do it by running through code. I'm going to single step through it so you can see what's happening here. I'm doing this slowly because once you have this basic concept, everything else is uh, the same thing, but more of it. So here we are. We go in, into the indent. Uh, it's starting off at zero. I, I didn't pass any value to it. So we're now at level one. What have we just passed I I into this? Well, it's a JSON object, which is a, a dictionary. So we print out to our major window, the type name and the number of count, the dictionary with one field. Then for each key in this, in the keys of this dictionary, we print the key name, which also is name here. And then we call this function again saying, okay, what do we have here? Uh, what is the value of, of this? Here, it's a simple value, but it could be anything. It could be more records. It, it could be more collections of records and so on all the way down. Uh, but here, fortunately, we have a nice simple one. Recursive call comes through. This time the JSON value is a simple value. Uh, we're at indent one. Type name, is it a dictionary? No. Is it a collection? No. It's a simple type. So we print, we, we, we did debug print its type name and its value. And that's it over. Hang on, move this thing out of the way here. How do I? I'm, okay, that's, yeah. That waiting room prompt uh, gets in my, my own way here. Yeah. So we have the, um, so this has done a bit of pretty printing of what the content of that, that JSON is. It now comes out of this uh, inner loop where we look, looked at the object. We, we're now back up at the initial call Lock of the JSON keys. There's only one key the whole thing, so that's it. Nothing else you can do. It comes out of the do events, ends up in the sub, and that's it. It's done. So that's the essential structure of it. Uh, so let me, as I've been talking for about more than half an hour at this stage, let me let me do, look for a bit of feedback and see is this all obvious? Or would you like to see one more thing? Would you like to see did this again, but this time instead of just one field, we have two, where the second field is a, a collection. Very small collection, just two items, but just, just to see how the loop is run through. Or do you all have the idea and you don't need to see it step through? How do you do polls on this, Alan? Do you do it in chat or do you ask people to speak up or what? Just do a pause. Yeah, just, just ask people to... Uh... Just pause, right. Chat. Yeah. Okay. Very close. Paul is saying to show us in the chat. Okay. Uh, no one else has reacted yet. So does that mean? Yeah. Okay, uh, we have two. Okay, that's 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 that, 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 that'll do me. <laughs> Vic, yeah. Okay. I th okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. We have it now. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I, I believe. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, of course, people have 
are still typing. So, okay, uh, we'll, we, we let that, um, that uh, asynchronous thread carry on while, while, we, <laughs> while, while we go through this one here. I'm going to go to, to my next uh, item. So that's the first uh, item in, in the record. My next item is, is going to be a, a, a collection. I'm going to call it members. Why not? And it's when you're typing quoted strings in VBA, trying to remember to type a double, double quote each time can be a bit you know, easy to forget. And the first one is, uh, yeah, let's call it today. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a collection. And the first one is uh, Taya. And the second one is Alan. Okay, da da. Uh, have I got all my clothes? That's, that closes the. Uh, the quote there, I think I'm there. Let me just read this back. So I have a name, one, two, three, uh, members, which has Taya and Alan. Let me just see what this is before I, before I do anything, before I, I raise more errors here. Um, yeah, that, that, that's fine. So we have a, a, f a field name, which in Jason is always quoted, by the way, a colon and value, another field name, colon, and its value is, is a collection. And it's a collection of two strings. And that's the end of the record. Okay, that's, that looks legal. Let's have a go at uh, parsing this and see how it goes. Uh, we debug. The top level is a dictionary. Very good. For each key, and the first key is gonna be name. So it prints out the name and then drills down in to see what, what, what is this name? It's a simple value, so it comes out again. What's the next key in this record? Well, the next key is called members. And the type of members, is it a dictionary? No. Is it a collection? Yes. So it's a, yes, it's a collection of up to items. And for each item in the collection, it prints out item one, then passes this item down to see, well, what do we have here? Is it a dictionary? No. It's a collection? No, it's a string. And we do the same thing. Now for the next item in the collection, it does the same thing. It, does, it works its way down. It's a simple item, as it goes, prints it out. Item to add on, and then we finish that loop, and we finish that loop, and we finish the whole thing, and, and we're out. And if I just do a, a run straight through, just there. So that's, that's, the, that's how we're drilling our way through the JSON object. And we're doing a bit of pretty printing there just to uh, de de debug it, if you wish. So that's where I usually start with some to Jason to say, what the heck do I have here? And uh, how does it look? However, we want to do something a bit more useful now. So it's time to go for the, the, the big time here. <laughs> and uh, right, here we are. Uh, I'm going to step through the, the code here. I have liberally sprinkled it with stop statements. So again, I'll be taking them out before I make this work workbook available. But um, yeah, I I've done the, this, this one here. Uh, I've done a, a debug watch. Okay, here, here we go. This, um, uh, we'll now apply what we've seen, but this time instead of, of uh, simply pretty printing it, we'll do the full conversion of all these things into record sets and then into, into sheets. So here we go. We step our way through all this. Uh, the file name is survey details, JSON. I have a routine which does the usual, you know, opens the file, reads it in, returns the text. That's, that's it. I won't, not, there's any need to go into that. There's the text. You can see it's a uh, that should be familiar to you now. You've seen the JSON in the notepad, so it's the same stuff here. And uh, I have a message here, which I would explain in a moment. Well, I'm gonna say no first. Uh, as always, uh, real life complications come in later, but uh, let's just do it the easy way first. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, ah, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say yes. Thank you. Uh, so I'm now going to flatten the JSON. And this sub, flatten JSON, is what the whole talk is about. 
uh, everything else was just laying the foundation. So we, 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 we go into this and the first thing it does is it powers the JSON and that takes all of one second or, or, or something. Uh, by the way, the, the parsing is reasonably efficient. It takes a second or three seconds or something like that to parse you know, uh, a, a couple hundred K of, of JSON. Uh, the other loops take a bit longer. Uh, so just to let you know some of the performance implications here. Uh, do I want to stop to watch the parse object? Uh, yeah, sure, I, I, I will. Okay, just to be interesting. Here's the JSON. Let's drill down into this. Here it is here. And this should be getting familiar with the stage. It's the record, the root record of the JSON title, name, blah, blah, and pay pages. So this is the dictionary at the root of, of the whole thing. And we'll see in a moment what all these are. I'm going to delete these now, so don't give myself any problems later. Now. Uh, now, I can, if I had time, I could uh, debug the, the values of it, but I don't have time for, for, for this because I just realized it's uh, five to seven. I've almost used up, up my time and I'm going to need about another uh, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, you're happy? Okay, good. You, you don't. Right. I'm, I'm not going to be cut off at the knees here. Right. Let's, let's have a look at uh, debug JSON values just to show you a few different ways of seeing that saying the same thing. You can, uh, if you debug the type name of the root object, you get a dictionary. The type name of the pages field unit is a collection. The first item in the pages collection is a dictionary, which is a page object. The first page object has a field called questions and it's a collection and so on. You can you know, follow down all those rabbit holes if you want, but that's, that's just the, uh, one kind of rather long-winded way of doing that. So you can see why I used a, a recursion. So let's go back here. Uh, I'm going to uh, not do this or not do that. I'm leaving those subs in there and you can read, read them in, in your own time if you want to see these different ways of looking at the JSON. But this is the important stuff here. The first thing we need to do is we have this collection of um, records in the JSON file. We need to loop through all of them and say, okay, what are the fields? What fields do we have here? Now, in real life, for any specific domain in SurveyMonkey, I go to the schema for SurveyMonkey, I get a list of what all the fields are. And so I know in advance, I can prefer the record sets using the schema. So I know what fields I expect to find in, in the JSON. Uh, and that's pretty good for SurveyMonkey who are pretty good at this kind of thing. There are certain data providers, not name aiming any, whom I wouldn't trust uh, to give the, the, uh, the same schema from one time to the next. So uh, I, I, I would probably have to just um, jump into the, uh, oh, I see Bill got the time zone wrong. Okay. Um, the, uh, some of these survey Providers are what we might call uh, the, the N, follow the NTSC standard, uh, never twice the same configuration. So here we have uh, a routine where we have to first of all collect all the fields. And the way that I, I do it is I make a complete pass through the whole file collecting all the fields. You might say, well, surely once you've seen a record, you know, what, what fields are, are, are in it. JSON is a bit more economical. You don't have to give all the fields for every record. The first time you see a record, there might be one subset of fields. The next occurrence, the same record down below in the file could have a different subset of fields. So you have to scan the whole thing to find the uh, all the possible fields that could be in this record. The second thing we need to do is to break out the fields into tables. This is where the recursion comes in again. So I'll uh, start off recursing into this and then, then I'll stop because it, it takes a long time if you start looking at things in de detail. So here we are, we're at the root level, it's a dictionary, yes. Uh, I 
now to see well, what kind of a, oh, sorry, I ought to have explained oh, that, that. Go back one level to the, this here. Uh, when I call this, I passed in the, the, the base name of the table as surveys. So the root of the whole thing, I'm going to call surveys. It was just the a name I decided to, to call it uh, here at the beginning. They are flat and decent text surveys. So that, that's where, so the, the first table name I'm going to call surveys. And thereafter, we find more tables as we work our way through. And what this one does is, I'm looking for this table name in my dictionary of record sets. Oh, I, I, should, I should have explained. I create a, my own dictionary, which is all the record sets I'm going to end up with. We have the key, which is a table name, and the value of the record set is, is, is the record set with, with all its fields. So what this one does is if, if that table name exists, it returns it. Otherwise, we add a new record set we call the source is a table name that has, doesn't have any value, it's just for debugging. And then we add to my dictionary of record sets this table name, and the item is a, it's a new record set. And I explain the rest afterwards. Now we have a record set, it's blank, no fields in it, so we start adding them. So for each key in the keys of this JSON record, we start adding its field names to the record set. The first one is title, I think, so it isn't a, an object. We append a field to the current record set where the key is title and the, and the JSON of the key is, is, is a string. Uh, to save time, I, I won't go into what append field does. Basically it does fields.append, the field name I pass in, and the ADO type name of the value. So it, it, it takes the value, whatever it happens to be, a string. It looks up a table to say, okay, what's the, what's the ADO type of string? The answer is, well, it's an AD var w car or something like that. And so it uses that as the type name. And that's all that happens here. Then it does the next one, the next field, the next field, the next field. And we keep on adding. We've added nickname, we added, um, and so on. Uh, at some point in all this, I'm going to put a break here. We, we come to a key which is called buttons text. This is the first collection, no, the first uh, object, I should say, sorry, in the, uh, if we've just done an is object test, the first object in the, in the fields. All the rest have been simple fields, they've been added. And if it's a collection, it adds a, a string field to it, just in case this is non-record data in there. But in this case, it, it's a record, so that's fine. When all this is, is done, and I'll just uh, take off this breakpoint, and I'll run the code here. When we've done this, we now have been through all the keys known so far, all the fields of the, of the record set. So that's that record set completed up to this point in time. We may update it later as we add some more fields. Uh, we now go through the whole loop of keys again, this time looking for objects, dictionaries or collections. And then we call the routine again to say, okay, what kind of object do we have here? Is it a dictionary? Go ahead and collect, add its table name to the dictionary collection, collect the fields, and, and so on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop working through at this stage. Yeah, we've just gone, gone past seven. Uh, essentially, I hope you will have seen that the recursive method means that ultimately we do process all the dictionaries, all the collections in the JSON, and you end up with, at the end of it all, when I come out of all this, if I do an F5, okay. Um, okay, we've now got all the, the right record sets. We now have a, a dictionary of right record sets, which I will now show you. Here we are. It is there, we have 14 tables in, uh, in this, and each of these is a record set. And you'll see in a moment what was in these record sets. Let me just get rid of that so I'm not left with that in the way. So it's time to go and document what we have. So we have some ideas of what's going on here. 
So we uh, work our way down through all this. We add a, a workbook. We uh, get the first uh, sheet name, and then we list all the record sets to the sheet. I'll just show you that very quickly for each key in the record. So for the first um, key, it's called surveys. It gets its um, right record set. And for each field in the record set, it dumps it to the sheet. And by this stage, I can now bring that sheet over to you. As you can now see over here, it's beginning to, to well, I can't, can I show you both of those at the same time? Well, only if I tile it. So it's now beginning to show you the fields that it has collected. When I just F5 through all this, to, to cut this short, here's the surveys table with the 20 fields. Here's your ADO types. So 202 is a string. Yeah, five is a double and seven is a date and so on. And at the end of it all, we have buttons text. It has four fields and variables, which doesn't have any fields at all. It exists as a defined record, but no, none of the records in this particular JSON file happen to have any fields in it. So this is going to be a, a, an empty record set, which we're going to ignore. Our, our seven fields in the pages and so on and so forth. So ultimately you end up with yeah, all these, all these uh, 14 record sets of which 13 actually have anything in them. And we're now ready, ready to go and do the, the, the real work, finally, which is to populate these record sets with the data. First thing we do is you have to loop through all these record sets and open them, but only if they have any fields. So that bit's all right. We now have a set of 13 open record sets, which we're going to populate. And we say JSON data to, to record sets. What the JSON data to record sets does is it does all this recursion stuff all over again, but this time, instead of looking only at the field name, it looks at the value as well and stuffs the appropriate, the value it finds into that field name. So all we really need to be pay attention to here are the key value combinations. Every time it finds a new key and value, it populates that record set with the value. For the sake of, um, speed and leaving time for questions, I'll skip this. If you want to see it later, I'll show it to you. But essentially you should now be getting fairly um, sick of seeing recursion. Ah, oh, God, what have I done here? Um, yeah, yeah, I have a null value in there. Oh, never mind. What do I do? Here. So, uh, or oh, probably, uh, uh, oh yes, it, it was it was the, the, the custom variables one, that, that, that was it. So um, it took 15 seconds to go and do all, all, all that. At this stage, we now have populated record sets. So it's time to go and send them all to sheets. So for, once again, for each key in my dictionary of record sets, if the state is open, we move the first record, we add a sheet, and we dump the whole contents of the record set to a, a, a sheet. And when all this is done, da. All right, that just took a second. Uh, I'll go back to my, where do I go back, go back, go back to my uh, sheet one, here we are. And here we have the field, the, uh, the, rec the table validation, which has three fields, type, text, and some text. Let's go for something we might recognize, go up to the very top. There is surveys. All these fields should be looking familiar by, by, by this stage. There is the pages, and we have these, this record for each page. Here's all the questions, ID, position, family, and so on, and so on. Now, the only thing with all this is, this is, this is the JSON, translated to record sets as we got it in the file. And it's nearly there, but there's one little problem with it. The heading record, for example, has only one field heading. But we don't know what question that that's a heading for. That's because in JSON, you will remember this uh, structure we saw here at, at the beginning, the relationship between uh, a parent and a child is implicit in the nested structure of the JSON. It doesn't need to say that questions belong to pages because 
it's a subset of pages. When you have a schema, however, you have to have something which links up questions and pages. So you have to have primary key and foreign keys. The primary key is the record's own ID. The foreign key links back to the parent uh, table here. Now that isn't provided to us in JSON. We have to do it ourselves. So we have to generate them. And that was all that generates, um, uh, all that generate ID stuff that, that I, I didn't do uh, anything about. So I'm now gonna run this routine again, but this time I'm gonna say generate IDs is true. It'll look exactly the same. Uh, I'm not gonna stop. And I'm not, I'm not gonna stop there. I'm not gonna stop there. I'm not gonna stop there. When you get this workbook yourself, you can stick in your own stops and breakpoints and spend all, all the fun you want. And now we have, uh, I better move this back back to the screen you can see. Here we are. We now have, there's the documentation, the surveys, which has, has no parent ID. It's just record one. This is the, the root record. Then you have the pages, which has a parent ID of one, so it links you back to the surveys. And it has records ID 3, 12, 13, whatever, whatever sequence number happened to be there at the time. And then in the questions sheet, we now have, so the, 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 this question four is on page three, apparent, uh, page uh, ID three, and so on. So this now, we, we can now finally link up all these uh, tables the way one expects database tables to be linked up. So, so this, this is now the structure that, that we want. I'm going to, I'm going to close this sheet one. This is the one we actually want. Uh, and the final thing I'll do, yep, yeah, I have just five minutes left. That's pretty much on time, I think. Uh, I'm going to, yeah. Uh, this is specific, to, everything else I've done up to here, this flattened JSON sub is independent of the source of, of the JSON file. It just does, it, it flattens it, whatever it is. This next bit is specifically for Survey Monkey, where I want to try and recreate tables like the ones I used to get seven years ago uh, when we were doing the old um, Excel tables. And of course, all the analysis code assumes we have Excel tables. So I had to do Excel tables. So the, what we do is we save the file and we run a test query. Oh, how do you link tables? Well, of course, uh, those of you who are in this will know that uh, if you want to, for example, for the see what is the heading for this question three, we know that if we go down to the, the headings, yeah, it's parent ID is four. So there is the uh, record ID four. So th th this is the question that, that has the, um, the heading, do you live in the Republic of Ireland? So over here on the right, you could add a, a, your favorite lookup, V lookup, index match, X lookup, whatever you like, to, to retrieve the heading for that particular question. Just to be different, I'll do it in SQL. So you go down here and here it is. We, uh, we join the required table and the sorting table and the heading table all the way back to the questions table. So we get one ni nice little table which does everything of interest in it in the one uh, less normalized but more useful uh, sheet. So we do that and then we, uh, so that, that, uh, that that's the, the query string. We add a, we add a, a, a worksheet, yeah, to hold the output. We uh, call a SQL query WB, which is um, a function that uh, creates an ADOB connection, executes the SQL pass into it, and then dumps that record set to the sheet. Job done. At the end of all that, we now have, uh, where am I gone? Yeah, here we are. This is now the sheet in what I would call a usable form. I have the question ID, the family it belongs to, it's a single choice or a multiple choice. It has the heading and probably has a few other things in it. Uh, yeah, whether it's required, whether the, the items are sorted and, and the error message if 
there's the error message you might have seen earlier. Um, if, if, if they didn't answer the question properly. So that's the kind of sheet I would want to end up with in, in practice. And the uh, next one is to get the question options, which is the same thing. I'm doing two queries because we have one for the uh, choices and one for the other text. So when you just, just F, F5 through all that, just to make it easy for me. And here's the question options table, which has the question ID, the answer IDs it has, and the option text, yes or no. And that is what I wanted to end up with an hour and a half ago. So that's the, I think that's the whole thing. I'll go back to my, oh yeah, I can go away from this, go back to my agenda. Do I need, need to say anything else at the end? Yeah, I recombine these atomic tables into the original sheets. I did explain how I need to generate ID keys. So we are now at, um, questions and answers. Um, I didn't ask for any during the session, probably just as well, or I, I could have been even later now. So um, I'm prepared to rewind to whatever stage people want to, to uh, further explain things. Thanks, Patrick. Um, what are, I don't think there were any questions during the session. Um, so if anybody's got any questions now, feel free to, oops, sorry, uh, to unmute yourself or to uh, throw some in the chat, whatever you're, uh, you would prefer if you have a question for Patrick. Well, I'll unmute myself. Um, Patrick, this Bill. is Bill. Hiya, hiya Bill. <laughs> Come on. See you all these years, man. All these years, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Patrick, I'm wondering, do you have anything a little bit more simplified that uh, doesn't have, for example, questions with multiple and other type answers, yeah. things a little bit more normalized to start with? And then I think for myself, I would find that maybe pick one path like dictionary or collection mm. um, and maybe go that route just to try to learn this more simply because you, you did cover a lot of ground and you tried to make yeah. it very uh, yeah, good question, Bill. What I did was uh, I gave one demonstration of an extremely simple uh, JSON at the beginning, which was very simple. It only had two fields in it. Uh, and I then went on to a hugely complex one at the end. In the middle, it would have made more sense if I had picked a survey with one question and two options or something like, like that. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, The simplest thing to say is uh, if you can get yourself your own JSON file and throw, throw it at this, this workbook here and see what happens, you will be, you're familiar with the data, so you know what it means. Sure. And, and you, you can therefore watch it how, it, how it iterates through the whole thing and explodes the uh, tables. And that might, might, make, might, might be more meaningful to you. No, I think it, all this actually made a lot of sense to me. I wanted to be able to show somebody else and to show them a little yeah. bit simple. Sure, so. sure. Well, for example, if you look at, um, if you Google for, uh, I don't know, six simple JSON examples or something like that, you have a <laughs> website where they have just that, um, a set of um, six uh, JSON files with um, not a lot of, of uh, stuff in them, but they're, they're, they're quite good learning examples. I was doing this because I wanted to do something that was, uh, my, my reason for doing it was that this was more complex JSON than I would want to do by hand, by simply ex expanding it by, by hand. So I want to be able to say, I, 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 get the, uh, I get the JSON file and just throw it at this sub and sit back and then, for 25 seconds, it's there. Uh, I have a question from, oh, sorry, before I forgot the, the next question. Anything else from Bill? No, thanks a lot. Good to hear. Okay, you. thanks, Bill. Good stuff. Yeah, from Glenn, how do you capture JSON files from Survey Monkey? That was done right at the start where we have, um, yeah, we, we uh, uh, yeah, we have an API request. Oh, and then I didn't, I didn't show that to you in, in VBA. Here, here we are. Uh, this is what the, it looks like in doing a request in VBA. 
uh, you sign you have to sign up to a survey monkey of course by the way this kind of api is only available if you're paying at least a hundred dollars a month uh for, for, for your survey um service um you might be better off if you want something free going to your open government data set pages which have loads of stuff Unfortunately, uh, I've tried a few of those, and some of the JSON they have is distinctly unusual. Uh, it doesn't, his not all quite records and collections. They have other things in there which are um, odd. Anyway, uh, here's how it works. We use the X MX, little MS XML2 HTTP object. We open it using the GET uh, request, and we there's the API uh, endpoint. Uh, in their ID, you put in the survey ID that, that, that you want. You, of course, have to have, already have access to, to that. You, ha you have a request header where you get this access token that you get when you first signed up to it. And you say you want JSON back. You send uh, a blank, in, the, in this case, uh, for, for survey d details. If you're, for other queries like getting the, um, getting the results, the request body will contain things like, I want this number of, of results, that kind of stuff, or this set of dates or whatever. And what you get back from uh, SurveyMonkey is this piece of JSON text in response text. So that then is returned. And now you have JSON and off you go after that with, with the rest. Did that answer it? <laughs> I'm sure it did. Yeah, excellent. 100 bucks a month answered me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I said, no, I said, yeah, I did, do, do, do have a look at, at the, either the simple examples or look at, at some of the government stuff. But they have some really uh, weird uh, JSON in there. I've seen one where they, they quoted the JSON text inside a JSON field. So all you had out of it was actually a string. What the record showed at the end was a JSON string. and we couldn't go through it any further. Uh, but uh, as in all these things, for any specific site, you're going to have to throw in your own code to do some uh, some extra work. Uh, life is never a, a simple. SurveyMonkey is one of the uh, most consistent structures going. So so this was a, this, this is another reason for, for choosing that rather than one of the government sites. <laughs> and you mentioned uh, about Google in six simple JSON examples, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do, do, do I have that here? In fact, already, I, I, I was doing it. Here, here's, one, here's one I prepared earlier, hold on. Um, <laughs> hold on. Uh, 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 oh, the state, the state of Hawaii, oh yes. <laughs> if you want some fun, have a look at, at the state of Hawaii or open the data set. They have some very unusual ones. Uh, there's the um, scripting, uh, the, the, how to parse. Oh, there's, there's Paul's one. Hi, Paula. Uh, that, that's your, your own one. Uh, custom JSON <laughs> data. Uh, um, okay, here, go back here. Where was the question? Yeah, that, that was my, my, my Google thing. I right, go back to the um, page. Uh, here's page one. Yeah, it's got four. It's always six. Four. Four amazing samples to JSON files or 10 JSON examples to use in your projects. So there you are. Um, Download those, uh, and you can get the. Um, get your teeth into it. Uh, yeah, you can get the words you want. The. Uh, cool. So I think, um, okay. judging by a lot of the comments in the chat and stuff, I think that's what a lot of people want to do. You know, take what they can from yourself, and then uh, they want to get their hands dirty and try things out. Uh, yeah, I have a message about my sysmod.com class, Jason. Oh yes, Lib. Uh, mm. Uh, it's because, yeah. Why do I say HTTPS? It's HTTP, yeah. Folks, uh, if I said HTTPS, uh, that, that, that was a, a, a typo. It's HTTP. It's, this is one of these old fashioned web websites. I, I, I was too mean to pay for the, um, this, this, the security thing. Uh, let me go back to my, um, uh, find, do I, do I have that here? Um, no, no, it's, it's okay. Uh, I, I have it correctly spelled here. It's 
TTP. But you also get it in, in its workbook. So if you download the, the workbook, well, that's, that's, it's in there too, as well as this demo code, which, which you can step through to see how it works. This is a, a different workbook to what you provided before the session. Patrick. Oh yeah, the workbook before the session was simply, all you got was the before and after pictures and that's it. This is the code. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a couple of mentions for that. Now, there's no workbook URL yet. I'm going to have to clean it up and take out some of the uh, junk <laughs> before, uh, some of the test junk before I, I release it. I'll, I'll post that onto the Meetup webpage uh, in the next couple of days. And uh, cool. have fun. A nice polish. Yes. Hey, guys, where's this Meetup webpage? Oh, uh, Alan, over to you. So I'll pop in the chat. Thanks a lot. There you are. Yeah, you're faster than me, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Hi, Paula. Good stuff. That was very good. Excellent. Um, Jason is my friend. Ah, good stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm very yeah. friendly with Jason. Me, Jason, and API, we, we hit it off fairly well. But I don't huh. do VBA. Okay. Have you done this with Power Query? No. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was other hoping that after the event, and like God, nobody did it beforehand. After the event, uh, a Power Query guru would tell me, yeah, "All you have to do is this, and you get the same thing in Power Query." Yeah. So I, I, I am uh, waiting to, to, to be told that. Whereby, that <laughs> whereby <laughs> all you do is you, you, you give me a DAX uh, script, and I pass it the, the, some JSON file name, and it just works without me needing to know anything about what's in there. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not that yeah. one that just works without needing to know. You kind of need but that's to that's the yeah, and, and that, that, yeah. that was the, the, the other problem. See, the reason behind all this was I, I when I developed the VBA add ins, add -ins for, for, for clients, they just want to click a button and things happen. Uh, then they're not going to spend time in Power Query dr drilling down into things, so uh, it's it's uh, you know, it's uh, a solution. I'd be keen to have a look at the workbook when it's uploaded and try sure. to work my way through it. VBA is sure, sure, definitely not my strong point. Yeah. But that key point that you said there of without knowing the structure, because they can be a headache. Yeah. They, you know, everybody designs their JSON differently with strings inside strings, inside yeah. objects, inside. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, it just, it, there's nothing ever standard when it comes to working with <laughs> JSON, yeah. and JSON yeah. data. So yeah, having something that's that is that is really neat, and it's not something I've been able to do with Power Query. I suppose if you know a little bit of M code, you could probably do it with a bit of M, but I haven't got that far yet myself on it. So yeah, yeah I'd be interested in having a look at this file. Nice one, Patrick, and great to hear another Irish voice on here. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Okay, I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Any other questions, guys? That was great stuff, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks, Hiram. Good to hear it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, 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 I as I'll be putting a link up on the on the <laughs> meetup page. Uh, what I should be doing when I have when I have got the initial feedback is put it up on GitHub so the world at large can can uh, tear it apart and improve it. Uh, because of course. Uh, as as Paul just said, that there's there's um, all kinds of weird and wonderful JSON out, out there, and somebody is going to find an exception and say, "Here's how you handle it, this exception," and uh, that's how things get better. And then you get somebody that tells you you need better answers on the survey. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Enjoyed it immensely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, this Thank has been you. great. Thanks a lot, guys. Signing off, everybody. Thank you. Cool, just one more way around. And um, oh, Craig, excellent. Okay. Cool. You can see the chat, Patrick, yeah? Also, oh, uh, uh, chat, chat. Uh. There's also thank yous coming through, just so you okay. can see. Them. Where, I have the chat, and I must have closed the blessed thing. What meeting, meeting, meeting controls, here we are. Well, <laughs> oh, it's up here. It, it moved, it moved, it moved. Yeah. Uh, nice. Security participants. Um, chat. Gotcha. Uh, 
<laughs> Curry Leaf is, oh yeah, oh, is that Bob? Oh yeah, we, I, 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 well, I had the, uh, the, the umbrella from the uh, 2010 one always. Uh, that, that, that was S Simon's, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I've got the shirt. I've got Patrick. I've got the shirt. <laughs> oh, great stuff. Yeah. The logo is fading a little bit, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two fits. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. That's why Bob's talking about the curry, and yeah. um, <laughs> and Bill and Bill was talking about uh, how nice it was to come over. It was a nice. Yeah. Day. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying to 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 uh, when we were getting. This ready. Um, it'll be nice when, when all this this is over and we can go back and have curries in London. So yeah, yeah. Indeed. Thank you, Patrick. Great. Indeed. Great. Great. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Is that Frazzy's voice I heard? Yes. Uh, any other questions, team? Uh, I know, Bob. I know, but uh, we, we, we'll. Um, yeah, I, I, I know that, 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 that those of us in the in the vulnerable category we might be a little bit later than the rest, but we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and of course, my thanks to Alan and Taya for masterfully organising all this and making sure that uh, all the technology stood up and, and, and still worked. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Cheers, buddy. Uh, Tim, if there's, uh, there's no more questions, we'll start winding this thing down. Feel free to jump in if you want to say hello or say goodbye or ask a question. I'd say hello and I'd say thank you. Uh, if you want quiet hearing, it's, it's so unusual. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> You want me to sing a song? No! Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have I started? That was one of the best sessions, Kiran. So we're never I, going to forget it. We we'll wait to the live performance yeah, in uh, <laughs> London. And... <laughs> I'll sell tickets. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say good evening, Patrick. Thanks good very evening, much. Paula. Pa yes, thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Good love evening. your voice, Paula. I love to hear you talk. <laughs> oh, See you yes. later. Oh, oh you're, you're silver tongued rogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, team, let's start. Uh, okay, so if, if that's it, then thank you very much. And thanks again to Alan and Tia. And we'll see you all on the far side. Uh, look forward to that 